Welcome to module 5. Just like the last module, I strongly recommend you do the reading for this module or at least read the module 05.pdf file that I provided for you in the same uh, place that you found this spreadsheet. So let's look at the basics. Just like in module 4, everything is the same, the concepts are the same, but we'll be learning a few new concepts. First one is uh, testing the claim about the population mean, and we'll also look at testing the claim about the population variance or the standard deviation. We can still use the p-value method that we learned in the last module where it's applicable. But in addition to that, we'll be learning about the confidence interval method that's described in the lecture text. Sometimes finding the p-value is difficult without the help of Excel, so Plan B is use confidence interval method. You should know how to do both of them. So let's look at the claim about the mean, but we don't know the sigma. Before we do that, here's one concept that you need to review, the critical values, finding the critical values. So he here's an example. Example one, the claim is that the for pulse rate for women is the mu is 73. Taking it, looking at the sample size, n is 40, and then we find the test statistic is t is 2.463. Find the critical value for alpha of 0 0.05. We cover, actually, we covered this in module 2 uh, when we learned to find the critical value. It's the same thing. So if you're unclear or if you're a little hazy on that, I suggest you go back to module 2 and review finding the critical values. So using that method that we find the critical values 2.023. So the critical values are plus minus 2.023. The way to make a decision as to reject or not reject the not hypothesis with the critical values is that, that you look at the test statistics, compare that to critical value. In this case, the rejection regions either T is less than negative 2.2023 or greater than the positive 2.023. Oops, so here's a typo. So since the T, the test statistic 2.463 is greater than 2.023, we reject the null hypothesis because the test statistics falls in the rejection region. Okay, so remember how I made that decision and we'll look at that a little bit later. So let's look at the p-value method first, and we're going to look at the left side, left tail, right tail, and two tail. Example two. Listed below are the measured radiation emissions in watts per kilogram corresponding to a sample of cell phones, so cell phone radiation. Using a, a 0 0.05 level of significance, test the claim that the cell phones have a mean radiation level that is less than 1.00 watts per kilogram. So here's the data on emissions. So we're going to assume that the mean radiation emission is equal to 1.00 watts per kilogram. The alternative is that the mean is less than 1.00 watts per kilogram because it says so in the, pro, uh, in the problem. So for this, if it's the mean, since we don't know uh, the, if the distribution is normal and or that the sample size um, less than 30, we use the T as our t uh, test statistic. So since we don't know the sigma, we're going to calculate the test statistic of T. So for that, you need the X bar, mu of X bar, S, and then the N. Mu of X bar is the same as the mu, so mu is 1. N is 11. If you count them, there are 11 numbers here. So that makes the degrees of freedom 10. X bar is calculated by using the average function. And then the S is calculated by using the standard deviation.s, stdev.s function, just like before. Plug all those numbers in to this formula here, which is reproduced here. We find the T value to be negative 
0 0.486 rounded. Plug it into the t-distribution uh, function, we find the p-value to be 0 0.3191. So the same rule applies. Since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So we conclude that there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim that the cell phones have a mean radiation that's the level that is less than 1.00 watts per kilogram. Okay, so that's the left tail. How about the right tail? Assuming that N is 40, the X bar is 172.55 pounds, and then S is 26 pounds. Let's also assume that sigma is unknown. Using the data, test the claim that the men have a mean weight of greater than 166.3 pounds. Let's set the alpha to be 0 0.05. So since it's a greater, I know that's a right tail test. So the mu is going to be 166.3 pounds. The alternative is nah, it's greater than that. So this makes it a right tail test. So again, since we don't know the sigma, we're going to calculate the t as to we're going to use the t as test statistic. So in that case, same thing. What's n? 40. So that makes degree of freedom 39. Mu is same as the mu of x bar, so 166.3. x bar is given to us as 172.55 pounds, so just type that in. Sigma, or s, well that should be s, is 26, so 26 here. And that makes us t, that makes the t 1.52. Plug that into the t distribution, the right tail function, t dot this dot rt. And we get the p-value of 0 0.0682. So, since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, again, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We conclude that there's not enough sufficient evidence to support the claim that the men's population mean weight is greater than 166.3 pounds. So here's a right tail example. So let's look at the two tail one. Assume that the greenhouse gas emissions from 32 different cards yielded the following data. So how many cards? 32. X bar is 7.78 tons. S is 1.08 tons. We don't know the sigma. So using alpha of 0 0.05, test the claim that all cars have a mean greenhouse emission of 8.00 tons. So again, the mean is 8.00. We don't know if it's less than or greater than that, so we set it to equal to, we set it so that it's not equal to 8.00. So n is 32, degrees of freedom 31, x bar is giving us 7.78, s is 1.08, and mu is 8.00. Plug it into the formula for t, you get negative 1.15. And for the two-tail test, for t distribution, there's a specific function called t dot this dot two t. So you can use the t dot this dot two t function, except that this function assumes the positive t value. So we make we use a uh, function called the abs absolute value sign to make a negative number positive. So abs stands for absolute value sign. So combine those two with the degrees of freedom, we get the p-value of 0 0.2580. Once again, the p-value is greater than alpha of 0 0.05, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We we'll conclude that there's not sufficient evidence to support rejection of the claim that all the cars, all the cars have a mean greenhouse emission of 8.00. Alright, so those are the one tail test and two tail test examples. Let's look at the confidence interval method. Here's one thing you should know. In confidence interval method, 
for a two-tailed test with the 0.05 significance level, we construct a 95% confidence interval. If it's a one tail, we construct a 90% confidence interval. So I summarized that for you in the table here at the bottom. Okay, so you should memorize, you should at least have this handy. We're going to be using this table quite a bit from this point on. So using the cell phone example above, construct the confidence interval that can be used to test the claim that the mean is 1.00 watts per kilogram, assuming a 0.05 significance level. So this is a one tail test with a 0.05 significance level. So we're going to construct a 90% 90, 90, 90 confidence interval, tongue twister. So mu is 1.00 watts per kilogram. The alternative is that it's less than that. So we need to figure out the critical value. And again, this all comes from module two. So I'm just going to go this pretty fast here. So then we find the critical value to be 1.81. And margin of error is 0 0.23. That makes the interval between 0 .0, 0 0.707 watts per kilogram to 1.169 watts, watts per kilogram. So how do you make a decision? Well, because the value of mu equal to 1.00 watts per kilogram is in the interval, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that the mu is equal to 1.00. So based on the samples, the sample of 11 values, we do not have, have sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean radiation level is less than 1.00. Since this 1.00 is in the interval, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So either method, we come up with the same conclusion. So if you remember the p-value method, we also rejected the null hypothesis. So either way, either the p-value method or the confidence interval method, you come up with the same conclusion. So let's look at the claim about the mean with the known sigma. Okay. When the sigma is known, we use the test that involves the standard uh, normal distribution, just like you saw in this table over here. If it's sigma is known, we use a uh, normal distribution. However, in reality, it is very rare that the, you know the population standard deviation when you do not know the population mean. So that's rare. So, but for completeness sake, let's go through this problem. Again, it's the same cell phone um, problem like we saw before, but then exception that, that we assume to know the sigma is 0 0.480 watts per kilogram. In that case, we calculate Z as the test statistic. So we found that Z to be about negative 0 0.43. Plug it into norm.s this function. And since the p-value is large, again, we failed to reject the null hypothesis and reach the same conclusion as before. So if you know sigma, follow this method. If you don't know the sigma, follow the previous tab. All right, so next, claim about the sigma or S. So we're going to be testing the claim about the population variance or the standard deviation. And we're going to be looking at the p-value method, either the left tail or right tail. So listed below are heights in inches for a sample, their simple random sample of 10 supermodels. Consider the claim that the supermodels have heights that have much less variation than the weights of a woman in general population. Weights, heights, a woman in general population. 
using the 0 0.01 significance level test the claim that the supermodels have their heights with a standard deviation that is less than 2.6 inches. So going back to this table, we're going to be using at the chi-square distribution. Okay. So the now hypothesis is that the standard deviation is equal to 2.6 inches. Alternative is less than that. So to figure out the chi-square value, you need the n, the s, and sigma. So n is here, degrees of freedom is 9. S, again, is calculated by using stdev.s function. Sigma was given to us. So plug that all into the formula above. You get the chi-square chi of 0 0.85. Since this is a left tail, I'm going to be using the chi-square dot distribution function. If this were a right tail problem, you can use chi-square dot this dot rt function. So again, chi square dot distribution function, and we get the p value of 0 0.0002874. Compare that to the sigma or the significance level of 0 0.01. You see that the p value is very small, so there's sufficient evidence to support the claim that the supermodels do have heights with a standard deviation that is less than 2.6 inches. So we're rejecting the null. So do, this, do the same thing by using the confidence interval method. And just as a review, here's how you, with, here's what size of confidence in, interval you need to create. Oops. Okay, so we're going to be calculating the chi-square values. We already know the S value, the N, and then degrees of freedom. For this, we're going to be using the confidence level 0.98. So that makes the left area 0 0.01, right area 0.99. For module three, you know that the left confidence or critical value is going to be 2.09, and then right uh, critical value is going to be 21.67. So using the uh, value of S squared here, I, we see that the interval for the low end is 0 0.5 and the high end is 1.66. Because the interval does not contain 2.6 inches, we can support the claim that the sigma is indeed less than 2.6 inches. Same conclusion as above. Okay. Also, you can use the critical value method by finding the test statistic and then t and then see it, what region it, it lands on. So does it land in the reje rejection region? Let's find out. So sigma is 2.6. That makes the chi-square 0 0.85. Since the chi-square is less than 2.09, we reject the null hypothesis. And again, which is consistent with all the conclusions we came up above. Okay. So this is how you test the claim about the mean with the known sigma, the mean with un uh, known sigma, and the claim about the sigma or s.